In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at the steps it takes to create your own dramatic opening sequence. I was looking at an earlier lesson where we touched on this, but there were lots of details we kind of brushed over. There are other techniques that you may find helpful that we didn't include. So this is going to be a revised lesson actually in two parts because we want to make sure we slow down and help you see all the things you can do to build something like this. Before we actually go into the steps, I'd like to ask you to look at the semi-finished product and you'll see what we're trying to create. The first step in building something like this is you need a video. So I have this one called Earth Zoom and I'll drag it on track one. I got this video free from IgniteMotion.com. If you go there you'll find a video like this or something else you might want to use for example. Now the video came in with a, a video track and audio track. There's nothing on the audio so I'm going to remove it. I'll right click on it. I will link and unlink the video and audio and then clicking only on the audio I'll press the delete key on the keyboard. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to lengthen my video. This is a great video that you can lengthen or shorten by changing down the speed of it because there are no people or cars or anything else running around where if you double or, or cut the speed in half it looks odd. It's, it's a simple visual uh, that's very easy to change the speed up. No one will know what the original one was. So I'm going to click on this and click on my tools menu above the timeline. Click on power tools. The fourth one down is video speed and the button is kind of hidden but I'll click on speed adjustment and this will go ahead and allow me to change the speed. We notice the speed uh, at normal rate gives me a 31 second video and I've decided I'd like a clip that's about a minute long. So I could put in the video duration if I wanted to or I could just move the multiplier. If I move it to the left, if I cut it in half, uh, now I'm a minute and two seconds and two frames. Or I can just type in the new video duration here. I'll put zero and I'll hit a zero here and it will calculate the multiplier. It slows it down not quite late, not quite at half and then I'm going to click OK. And now I have a 60 second video. Nice. Now if we were working in Hollywood and we would seldom edit the video like that because we would have all kinds of audio people who could create their own music and they would tie that to the video but for most of us we can't create our own music we need to do some of these shortcuts. So now I have my video. I'll close that window out and now it will play for exactly 60 seconds. The next thing I need to decide is what I want for audio and so I have another file I got off the internet for free and unfortunately I didn't record the location it came from. It's just called Eyes of Glory and it's uh, more than long enough for my 60 seconds. So I'll have to trim the end off of it when we're done. So that's what I have there. But the next decision I have to make is what am I going to do for titles? Now there are two things I want to do to titles. I want the titles to match the music, the beats of the music as they come in. And I want them to match 
the visual on the screen. And I look on the screen and I see I have the earth and I have these two basic contrasting blue colors, a dark blue and a lighter blue. And that's what I'm going to use for my titles for my uh, actors in my movie. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here and we'll go to our title room. We can press the F7 key and I'll drag down my default title. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and edit my title. So I'll double click on it. And now I have already looked through my font options. And so what the one I'm going to pick is Adobe Caselon Pro Bold. So I just can type the name of it. And I got to the first part of it. If I just click down, I'm near there in the alphabetical list. So that's a quick way to get there. And I'm going to pick 28 for font size. Now the other thing I want to change here, let's put our first actor in here, Will Smith. The other thing I'd like to change besides all that is the color. So I go to the font face, which default for me is white uniform. We'll click on a two color gradient. We'll begin with, that will be my top color. I'm going to pick a something in the kind of the light blue range here. And then I'm going to click my end width. That's my bottom color. I'll pick something more of a navy almost and click OK. And, if, and then what I want to do, I'll click off of here. That's looking better. But we'll go ahead and click on it again. And what I want to do also is besides add a font face, I want to add a shadow. And so I'll click on shadow. My default's black. I'll change it to white. And I don't want the distance to be three. Instead of moving the slider, I'm going to drag over the number, type in one, and press the Enter key. That'll give me a more subtle shadow here. And so if I click away from it, oh, that looks pretty good. And we'll get back on it, and we'll move it. We'll have it come down about here. I've memorized kind of where the Earth moves during the course of the video, or I could just go ahead and play it here. And we're going to see where it comes in. I want to make sure that it doesn't ride on top of it. But I do want an effect to start with and an effect to end with. So I'm going to click on my Effect tab. And let's go ahead and pick a starting effect first of all. I've decided I'd like to do a simple slide down. And the effects are alphabetical. So I click on slide down and there it comes in really nice. Then I need an ending effect. So now we have our ending effects selected and this one, let's do a simple fade. Again, they're alphabetical. So I click on fade and that's done. Now to verify that, all you have to do is hover the mouse over the darker blue. I have slide down and I have fade. Now what we're going to have to do in the course of the video is change how long it takes to do both of these. We'll get to that in a bit. So I click on OK and now I have my first title here. And so if I go ahead and play You notice the titles are not responding to the beat of the music, so we're going to have to time them. How do you time a title? Well, the best way to do it is to get the beats in your music and then you link the title to that. So all I need to do is right click on my audio and then click on Use Automatic Beat Detection. And then I have the screen that pops up like this. I'm going to magnify my waveform so I can see better. And then what I want to do is mark the beats. Now, I don't like the automatic form. I like doing it by myself with a manual. That's the lower right quadrant here. Every time when I hit the play button, I want to add one. I just click on the add button. But what I like better is press the A key. When I hover over the add button, it tells me I can manually do it simply with the A key. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. And whenever I find a beat that I might find useful, 
when I when it comes to moving my title, making it appear, freeze, or disappear, I'm going to press the A key on the keyboard. I'm going to do it for the entire uh, clip, but what I'd like to do is shorten the tutorial. So when I'm done, I'll uh, get back and we'll press the Apply key and go from there together. But we'll start, and I'll show you how to get this started. Now that we have all the beats detected that I'm going to use in the first 60 seconds, I'm going to hit the Apply key, and now we have all the beats on our major timeline. The next step is I have the title in the color I want coming in and out when I want, but now I want to tie it to the beats. What I think I'll do, since these are basically four beat segments, is I want it to come in between the first two, freeze between the second two and end between the last two. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my first title for my first performer and make it the width of these four. Then what I want to do is I want to mark the time here because I don't have a beat marker inside my title tool. So I've got uh, two frames 19 seconds and 5 frames 10, 219 and 510. So I double click back on my title designer and I make sure I have the right clock chosen. Now I want to go to 219 and then I want to go to 510. And I'm actually going to shorten the end of it just a little bit. When you do that, you notice it's going to change the numbers again. So you make sure you didn't change them by too many frames. Okay, 219 and 510. I want to make sure that the uh, effect, uh, the fade effect, is all done before the end of the title. And so what I'm going to do now, let's make this a little bit wider so you can see better. Let's go ahead and see how well this matches the music in the first sec section. Not bad. So we have one to drop down, one to stay solid, and one to fade. The next step is to take this title. We'll, we'll right click and we'll copy it. And we'll press the N key to move to the end. And we'll do Control V to paste. And again, Control V to paste. And again, Control V to paste. And again, and Control V to paste. You notice we're not on the beat markers. That's because I did not set them perfectly or the music varies a little bit. So what we're going to have to do now is change each of these individually again. We'll change the name of the actor or actress. We're going to look at the two beat markers in the middle. This is 1011 and 1303. So I'll double click. And we'll click our time code and we'll go in 1011. Well, first of all, I've got it shortened. That's good. 1011 and 1303. Click on OK. And now I'll pause the tutorial and we'll do the other two. Now let's check and see how good our timing is with the titles and the music having adjusted each of these four to fit the beat markers that we put in previously. Comes down, freezes, disappears. Down. Good, that seems to work really well. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the next lesson focusing on the title. The title is going to be somewhat different from the actors. 
is actually going to chase the globe down as the globe comes closer to the camera and farther to the left. It's a little bit complicated, but we'll show you how to do that and then how to add the ending sequence in the next tutorial.